So we're going to have a look at this. Now, one of the reasons why we have completely the square up our sleeve is because many questions will resist the ability to be factorized simply. Now, I just made this up, but when you have a look, what kind of pair of numbers are you trying to think of? A pair of numbers that adds to negative 3 and multiplies to negative 16. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling, right? Now, it may well exist, but the point is, like, just with, with the circle geometry question, there's a point at which you say, I don't need to worry about, th like, bashing my head against the wall. I've got other strategies or other things that I can go on with. And completing the square is one of them, okay? So the first thing, the very first thing we do with completing the square is we need to consider a monic version of this, a monic version of it. It's not monic right now because of the two, so how will I get rid of that two? I'll divide everything through. So this equation here is equivalent to the first one because it's an equation, so I've divided both sides by two, all good. Once I've done this, the whole idea of completing the square is that this thing in here, if I add something, if I add just the right piece onto it, it becomes a square. It's not right now, but I can turn it into one, okay? So being that I'm only considering this part over here, I get this negative four, and I'm like, I don't want it there. So what will I do to get rid of it? I'll add four to both sides. Let's do that. Okay, so you can see why I'm doing these steps, okay? I, it's because I want to work with something that's simpler. I want to focus on just this part of it. Here's the, the crucial, the completing the square piece. I need to add something to both sides that will turn this left hand quadratic into a square. So the key is really this number, this number in here. What do I have to do to this number? Who remembers? I'm going to halve it and then I'm going to square it. Halve it, square it, halve it, square it. Okay, and that number is what I will add to both sides. It, it's fine. Okay. So once I halve this number, this number here, um, I'm going to have three quarters, right? That's half that. So what's the square of that? Nine over sixteen. So I'm going to write this. Like so. That step there is the step that completing the square is named after because now this thing on the left hand side is a square. It's going to be x take away, how do I know it's take away by the way? Because of that, right? That won't emerge unless I've got this here, right? Now remember how you halved and then you squared? You halved and then you squared. When you halved it, you created this number, right? Does that make sense? Because this thing is the square out of completing the square, which is why this is the, it's the b squared in a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, right? So when you halved and squared it, you got this, but halving it is what gives you the number you need, okay? Um, 4 plus 9 over 16, should we do something with that? 70. It's an awkward number, because I just made this up, okay. So this is good, this is progress, because I have a factorization, but I haven't solved this, have I? So now what must I do? I will take the square root of both sides. Now we remember that when you take the square root of both sides, you have to remember that you're expecting two solutions, not one. So on the right hand side, I'm going to have to say not just root 73 on 4, I'm going to have to say plus or minus uh, that number. And now I'm pretty much there, aren't I? I'm, I'm only one line away. What shall I do to both sides to finish? I'll add three quarters. So I'm going to get three plus or minus. Ta-da! And there are our solutions. Thank goodness I didn't keep on staring at that until I guessed three plus root 73 on four and three minus root 73 on four. Okay. So this process is useful because number one, um, it deals with when you can't just guess. Right? Uh, number two, because it's where the quadratic formula is born. Right? The quadratic formula is born when you do this process uh, to this guy. That's what happens. Right? If we go through identical, you know, uh, uh, divide through, move this guy over, add whatever you need to add and rearrange, then this is where you land. Okay? Lastly, one quick thing. Uh, write this down on the side for me. Um, mm. Um. 
this guy here. This is not a quadratic, nor is it a function. Uh, but it's clearly related to quadratics, and it's clearly related to functions. If I asked you to draw this, what would it be? This would be a circle. Okay? Now at the moment in the current form that it's in, I know nothing about this circle. I'm going to have to rework this quite substantially in order to work out where the center is, work out where the radius is. How am I going to rework it? Answer, with this tool. Right? Uh, we can quickly do this right now. Have a look. You can see here's a quadratic function that makes it up. Here's another one, and then here's something which is going to give me my radius eventually, once it's complete. So have a look at this. What will I add to that to complete the square? Remember what you do with this number? There's two things you have to do. You, you halve and square. Halve and square. Okay. So once you halve, you get 1. And then when you square that, you get 1. <laughs> We're having a bad day today. Um, there's that guy there. How about this one, right? You're going to halve and square. So halving gives you negative 2. Squaring gives you plus 4. Here, yeah, we got it that time. Um, plus 4. Now, to make sure that this is balanced, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. I don't want it there. I'm also going to add the 1 that was here. And I'm going to add the 4 that was here, because I, I intended to add those in. And now you can see the next line, which is factorized. Now I can read every required feature of this that I need, right? I know where the center is. Where's the center? The center is at, <coughs> excuse me, negative 1, comma, 2. And I know what the radius is in this case. The radius will be root 12, OK? So in order to understand this object, which is neither a quadratic nor a function, you have to appeal to this thing we know about quadratic functions, OK?